Hi, I am Thomas from Believe in the Run. Nope. No. <laughs> All right. Hi, this is Thomas from Believe in the Run. This is Rob from Believe in the Run. And today we're talking about the Hoka. Carbon X3. Three of these. Three before of these start, suckers. Yep. And before we start, make sure you like and subscribe and do all the things that make us very famous. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It, tell a friend about this fabulous channel that you've encountered. Yeah. Or your mom. Yeah. All right. Let's go. One person that will not be liking and subscribing is probably Hoka after this. Ugh. But we're gonna get into it anyway. <laughs> Sorry, Hoka. It, hey, we're honest. That's what we base our yeah. It's, it's in our, our DNA. livelihood. We can yeah. we can we cannot tell a lie. But before we get into all that, let's just go over the shoe. This is the all third right. version of the Hoka Carbon. Which even when it came out, we were like, "What is this shoe? Is it a racer? Because it has a carbon plate." And it was right before like everybody was doing carbon plates. So it was like Nike then Hoka, and we're like, it's a carbon plated racer with a high stack. This is gonna be a Nike competitor. At the time, carbon plate was like the word. Anything that had a carbon plate that you knew was coming was a big deal. We were confused about the shoe because also if any shoe felt like the Vaporfly before the Vaporfly, it was a Hoka like Clifton. I always thought, oh, the Vaporfly kind of feels like a Hoka Clifton with a plate. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, Hoka's gonna be able to kill it. They're gonna throw a plate in a Hoka shoe and we're gonna have another super racer. This is one of the shoes that a lot of people just like as a daily trainer almost, that yep. makes it more fun, I should say. And I personally only ran in the first one, which I didn't love, so I never tested the next two, so I'm gonna be more of a sidekick to you on this one. All right, um, let's get in the sidecar and <laughs> get going. I'll yeah, give right. a little history. So the oh. first one was interesting shoe, it was a little bit heavy, it was a little bit clunky, but you're like, all right, we've got a carbon plated shoe from Hoka, awesome. As you can see between the color thing here, color thing, what do you call a color transformation? I don't know. Sure. The two colors, the blue and then the white, basically where that line is is where the plate is. And then you can see on this shoe and in the Carbon X2, this lower level, they move the plate further away from the foot. And what that did, Robbie, was give you a nice softer landing, made the shoe more comfortable. And the Carbon X2, I really liked. That was like one of your favorite Hoka's yeah. from last year, I think. It definitely was. It wasn't perfect, the upper wasn't perfect, but it, overall, I really liked the shoe. I felt like you got a nice landing in the shoe, but the rigidity of the plate, what it does more than anything is guide your foot through the stride and keeps the extreme rocker in the shoe rolling. What makes that shoe so much better, or maybe what makes this shoe so much worse than last year's version? Comes down to the upper, but what you're really looking at is the same midsole, even though they said it's not. It's Profly X and Hoka's said this is like their newest iterate, iteration of ProFly, which is like softer, more bouncier. Uh, in your experience, what, how'd you, what'd you find? I couldn't tell the difference between this and the foam that's in the Carbon X2. Underfoot, it feels identical. Like there's just not, there's nothing new about this foam. But which isn't a horrible thing because no. you did like the Carbon X2. I did. So then what Still makes did. this, what makes the foam or the midsole maybe incompatible with other parts of the shoe? Well, people don't always give the upper enough credit for the overall appeal of a shoe. They think that it's always the midsole foam or the way that it tracks. An upper makes a huge difference in even the way that the midsole feels underfoot. For sure. I mean, we've even said that we think the next frontier of development or you know, that 4% advantage will come from a better upper. A better fitting upper ties you into that midsole and you're gonna get a better roll through the foot. One of my favorite shoes all time ever was the Nike Lunar Epic with the high collar that just kind of molded you right into the shoe. I love that shoe. And even last year with the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2, that had the like the special edition the plus the plus yeah sorry uh we felt like that upper changed that shoe it really did that changed my feeling about that shoe and the way that it worked with my foot so that's what we're getting into here is a knit upper versus an engineered mesh or mesh upper that was on the carbon x2 and i will say like in the past there are knit uppers that we love Nike Epic React. For if example. it's done correctly, it really can work well. And what that is, is there's different areas in the knit that either 
are gonna be rigid and hold your foot still or flexible to let your foot flex. Unfortunately, in this shoe, it seems like the only place they left flexible elastic in the knit upper was in the throat and tongue area. And you can even see to make mine fit correctly, I had to really cinch these suckers down. Look at that yeah, puckering, it's Robbie. It's Mark Puckerberg over here. I like that. Um, <laughs> it's the meta metaverse of shoes. Oh, it's like the meta. There is a meta. It's not yeah, meta speed sky. Oh, this has a meta rocker. Meta rocker. Right? There you is go. Is this a meta rocker yeah, on this? The, is that their term for it? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Meta rocker, Mark Puckerberg. Mark Puckerberg. Now you'll get fooled. Some people will get fooled because this upper looks beautiful, but if you really look at it, Robbie, there's not a lot of give to it. What happens is. Even with me zuckerberg in this down so that it fits over my foot, mm -hmm. not to confuse you, lacing it really tight to get a good fit on my foot, which is narrow and low volume, it left room in the shoe. I felt like there was gap, but there's no lockdown lacing in this because it's not really possible in this knit upper to do that. The heel counter wasn't horrible, but there was enough play in it that when this rigid rocker is coming down, you can see like when I'm towing off, my heel's already lifting a little bit and it's kind of fighting the shoes. So as I come down, there's like a little bit of looseness coming through. And then as I pull up, there's enough give in this upper that I'm separating from the midsole in my stride and then the midsole is coming with me. That split second of it loading and taking off gave it a really clumsy feel. It's a it's a very heavy knit too. Yeah, like like sandpaper. Yeah, and I, I can't imagine in the summertime that it's gonna be incredibly breathable as it's well. It's gonna soak with sweat. Yeah. Um, Soka. As you, so, <laughs> you like it? That's a good one. All right, I'll give you that one. <laughs> Usually Robbie's coming ten, up with that stuff. 10 points for Gryffindor. Thank you all! Remember you did a test one time where you like pour water on the upper to see how much heavier it makes it? Yeah. Dude, when you have a sweaty upper, that's a huge, it's it a adds huge a few ounces. And that was when I was looking <laughs> at the difference between a vapor fly with the uh, vapor weave and the knit upper. I took the knit upper one, soaked it, it gained three ounces in just water Nothing. weight versus the vapor weave. So knit uppers will soak up some sweat, will weigh down a shoe. And that's one that fit really well. This one doesn't. Yeah. So I can imagine this one wet being a very good experience. For those of you who are still not deterred by what we've said so far about the Carbon X3, well, let's give some stats. Yeah, okay, so this is, I believe it weighs around the same as the last version, 9.1 ounces, 257 grams for a men's size 10 and a half. Uh, the heel stack in the rear is 32, uh, and the forefoot is 27 millimeters for a five millimeter drop. That's in the men's, the women's version is two millimeters less. And then this is coming out April 1st. Uh, I mean, this is the April Fool's joke. Uh, for $200, which mm. is, it's either 200 or 210, because um, prices just keep going up and dates keep getting delayed, so we'll also see if this actually comes out in April or not. I don't know what it, I want Hoka to do with this shoe next. I don't know, if, what do you think? I don't even know. Well, I'm interested to see what happens with the Rocket X, but we won't see that until 2023. These two shoes kind of exist in a weird area where it's like, let's just make both of them better and make one shoe. Mm -hmm. So one great plated racer for the road from Hoka would be amazing. You also, something that we didn't cover was this exposed uh, EVA on the bottom. Well, I had quite a few miles on this. I think I had like 40 or 50 miles in this. There's not a ton of wear. There's a little cosmetic along the outer edge, but overall it holds up pretty well. The shoe is going to last a while. So for $200, I don't think it's, or 210. Yeah. I don't know that it's a shoe that you won't get your money out of. I think you'll be able to get plenty of miles in it. I just don't know that if you are a fan of the Carbon X2, you're gonna really like this upper. So what I might recommend, all these shoes are on delay anyways, why don't you grab yourself another pair of the Carbon X2 if you like that shoe, because like me, I really thought that was a better mix between the upper and the midsole. Honestly, if all they had done is made a better upper with the same midsole, I think I would be doing a different review right now. Yeah. All right, Thomas, so final conclusion on the Hoka Carbon X3. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Gets the red light. Red light district coming Stop. up. Stop, stop. Um, so I hate that we, the first two Hokas we reviewed this year, well, on YouTube, uh, the Kwana, I don't even think we're gonna get we to. We put that on That's, YouTube though. 
just wherever. First, First impression. Thoughts. I'll just tease it. I already did in the Supersonic, but here's a good one that is coming. So stay tuned for this. That'll at least redeem redeem yeah. Hoka in some way. I love it. Of all the Hoka shoes that we've gotten this year, the only one I didn't get was the Tecton X, which apparently is the one that everybody on our team seems to enjoy. Yeah. So I'm fine with that. It's cool. So we're going to wrap it up. We're going to remind you to check into the Drop Podcast. Check into our Strava group, Facebook group, Instagram, Instagram. Mm, what else? I don't know. I, I can give you a Robbie's good. home phone number if you want. Uh, we're, we're, we'll do my, anything for a like. It's my landline phone. Yeah. <laughs> do you still have my landline? <laughs> no, I wish. All right. Like, Hello. Spin that dial. Yeah, Robbie's house. <laughs> what would you like? Uh, we got chicken tenders and uh, graham crackers. Mm, I, <laughs> That's the special today. Those are the main things. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. By the way, um, did you know what 50 Cent said to his grandma when she gave him a sweater for Christmas? He said, gee, unit. <laughs> yeah, I get it because of the knitting. So, gee. Yeah, let's try that one again. All right. All right. So, so, so <laughs> don't die.